everyone so from this lecture onwards we are going to talk about carbon materials mm. so carbon materials basically means you have different crystal geometries mm. so we are still talking about elemental carbon but we are talking about different crystal geometries that are formed because of the different hybridization states mm. so you already have an idea you already now know about uh, you know the uh, what is the shape of sp3 hybridized uh, you know molecules and um, the sp2 and so on but we are going to now, now talk about the materials that are um, that are formed because of uh, these hybridization states now you would say these are very fundamental things sp2 uh, uh, hybridization sp3 and the diamond and uh, graphite formation but it's important for us because if we want to talk about engineering carbon materials because when we want to um, manufacture our materials themselves mm, uh, let's say from polymers or whatever sources of carbon in that case the hybridization becomes very important sometimes you can induce certain process parameters that will make your material more graphite like or more diamond like sometimes there is a certain process which even though you want the process to uh, you know give you diamonds but it will give you maybe some diamond and some graphite mm. so these processes are very much connected to each other but let's start with the you know fundamental geometries and fundamental primary materials representative materials of each type mm. so we start with sp3 you already know that there are uh, you know 3p and 1s orbital they form a molecular orbital which is of sp3 type and what is the geometry of this kind of uh, uh, you know molecular orbital then you have this what is known as tetrahedral kind of geometry what does that mean this is more like if you have a tripod stand hmm, and then on top of that there is one more uh, you know one more orbital Hmm. So something like this, it looks like. Huh? So it looks, you can say it looks like a pyramid, especially if you connect all four corners. Hmm. Now in these four orbitals, you will find your four electrons. Hmm. So this is in terms of explanation, this is very easy. You have four electrons hmm, and you have four hybridized orbitals. So all of them are at the same energy level. Each one will have one electron each. Hmm. Okay. So this is this is kind of uh, you know this is a very stable geometry and definitely there is no free electron there is no electron that is um, available for electrical uh, conductivity for example mm. so this is basically your diamond crystal now if i have this one um, you know uh, the pyramid like geometry that is the structural unit i can have one more and one more and one more mm. and that is how your large scale diamond crystal would look like mm. and the angle between these two orbitals mm. so here i have shown these orbitals with straight lines but you know uh, that these are just these are the lobes of your sp3 uh hybrid these are the lobes of the p orbitals so to say mm. not p orbitals but sp3 hybridized orbitals okay but the angle between them is 109.5 degrees in all cases mm. so this is your primary structure of uh, of diamond mm. Diamond type crystal structure, if you want to think of it in terms of uh, the traditional uh, crystal lattices, in that case, diamond cubic crystal is basically two interpenetrating FCC or face centered cubic structures. So if you take one FCC and then you insert another FCC inside, that is how your diamond crystal looks like. Mm, okay now there is also uh, th this is uh, a, a, a crystal structure which is relatively rare mm, in materials in nature mm. however there is one more very technologically important car uh, important not carbon material but another element that has the diamond type of crystal structure this is in fact called the diamond cubic structure mm, okay so maybe you can do a little bit of search and you can find it out for yourself which other technologically important element has the diamond crystal structure okay so as i said already that uh, the electron transport is not possible in diamond because all four bonds are satisfied so basically now these electrons they participate in bonding with other carbon other sp3 hybridized carbons mm. so they do not participate in bonding with any external um, you know uh, let's say um, chemical mm. They do participate, however, in the bonding with each other. So because only at the time of bonding, you get the hybridization. But bonding is between carbon and carbon. Mm. OK, so we also know a um, few things that um, if you have four electrons, four carbon, uh, four uh, orbitals, then in that case, the probability of finding each electron in each orbital equals one. Mm. OK, 
so this is also um the response this is also um the reason for all the properties of diamond mm. so one is of course electrical property but also the fact that it is one of the hardest known materials mm. in fact the hardest known materials but also um i'm saying one of the hardest known materials because even uh, the single sheets of graphite are known as um, harder than diamond but for technological this we we will discuss that in the you know later uh, why that is the case but in the case of technological materials diamond still remains the hardest uh, material except maybe some compounds huh, very advanced um, you know ceramics and so on but in elemental materials and still among all the materials as such diamond is one of the hardest materials and that is extensively used in technological applications for example for making cutting tools drilling tools hmm, and many other um, you know even surgical tools and so on okay so the point is that it is very light and it is very hard okay what about uh, why is um, diamond light hmm, graphite is also light hmm, so being light in terms of weight um is actually not, it has little to do with the crystal structure all the crystal structure does play a role the density you know how closely packed your um, atoms are but other than that one more important reason for these material carbon all carbon materials uh, uh, for you know to be lightweight is the fact that carbon as an element itself is very light it has only six electrons so it is one of the lighter elements hmm. and also um it forms very strong bonds so the for all the carbon materials one very important property that we will uh, we will often come across is the fact that the materials are light and strong hmm. okay so these are some of the properties of diamond hmm. where is diamond found so we have also talked about uh, deep carbon so this is about the natural occurrence of diamond this is found you know about 150 to 200 kilometers below the earth's crust hmm. okay and it is known to be formed under very high uh, temperature and pressure conditions okay there are various theories about the formation of diamond and these theories also are you know uh, they have been validated uh, by some experimental uh, data one theory is that um, the widely acceptable theory is that diamonds are formed when there is also some hydrogen atomic hydrogen present in the atmosphere atomic hydrogen not hydrogen uh, molecules hmm. so if you have atomic hydrogen that basically means that the conditions must be extreme because a hydrogen uh, molecule splits into hydrogen atoms only at around 2000 degree centigrade uh, or under plasma or any other very you know extreme conditions but if you have this atomic hydrogen present then in that case during the formation of diamond there are certain linkers the hydrogen sort of links hmm, attaches to this fourth orbital hmm the uh, so three of them are already satisfied the fourth one if hydrogen attaches to it it provides temporary stability hmm and then this hydrogen is replaced by another carbon atom that is how you have this sp3 uh, type of geometry otherwise given the that graphite or sp2 type geometry uh, is more thermodynamically stable you would uh, you know this structure would flatten and you would get graphite so we will probably learn about it in one of the uh, you know one of the lectures when we talk about diamond related materials okay so um this one thing is clear that you need extreme conditions for the formation of diamond and that is also the reason you find uh, you know more graphite in nature compared to diamond mm, okay so there have been also a lot of uh, by the way experiments where people have been able to uh, synthetically uh, prepare diamonds mm, there has been a lot of interest in this uh, uh, area and we have been able to make synthetic diamonds in fact they are commonly used in cutting tools and so on these are not nice natural diamonds mm. but on the other hand the conditions that are required for formation are uh, still there because uh, you require high uh, temperature and pressure conditions and the crystallites that we uh, that the, the crystals that we obtain uh, using synthetic processes are relatively small so they are not like you know kohenoor diamond so they are not really uh, large scale diamond uh, crystals but rather uh, you know relatively small and that is why we use it for uh, making tools and so on we also have films of diamonds that are used as coatings for a lot of tools okay what is interesting about diamond now is that this is you know that this is not the most thermodynamically stable state that is graphite graphite is forever hmm okay diamond however although it is a meta stable state it can survive up to thousands of years hmm okay so 
metas uh, often uh, you would think that meta stable means uh, the material should only be stable for like a couple of seconds or so hmm. or less than that but the truth is that no meta stable materials are any materials that are not the most uh, you know uh, stable material or form of a certain element or material but on the other hand they can actually survive for thousands of years hmm. like in the case of diamond so despite the fact that it's not the most uh, stable state, it sur survives. However, if you heat it, let's say, at uh, 1700 degrees centigrade, in that case, it would convert into graphite. Hmm. Now, why does that happen? Because there's a certain activation energy that is required to convert diamond into graphite. That activation energy has to be artificially provided. That kind of energy is not really available, um, you know, in nature. Hmm. Okay, when it is available in that case, also in nature, diamond would convert into graphite. But often when we mine the diamond in those mines, that kind of, uh, you know, very high activation energy that is required to convert diamond into graphite. We are going to discuss all of this, uh, you know, all the calculations we are going to do in one of the lectures uh, later on. Uh, but briefly, let me explain it to you. This is a diagram where you see diamond and graphite. So this is uh, on the, uh, so D and G I have mentioned for diamond and graphite and E is your energy, energy of formation, enthalpy of formation, you can also call it. Hmm. So you can say, you can see here that diamond is at a higher energy than graphite. Hmm. So in principle, the overall structure has a higher energy, hmm, which basically makes your graphite more stable material. However, you also see that there is a certain energy barrier. Hmm. There is this hump which the diamond would have to cross then go into this uh, more stable state hmm. so this hump is basically that is your activation energy hmm. that is the energy that you need to provide to diamond okay fine so in general metastable systems or these are dynamic systems so, so you can say that they are um, in principle converting uh, or trying to every system uh, tries to attain its lower energy state right so also you can say that diamond is trying to attain its lower energy state but despite but because of the fact that you have this very high activation energy involved it does not naturally takes place hmm. but we can definitely convert diamond into graphite although you might not want to do it. Hmm. Okay, the other way around is more interesting, right? Graphite to diamond rather than diamond to graphite. Okay, so let us talk about graphite. Hmm. This is our sp2 hybridized carbon material, hmm. and this is the this is the main carbon material of this type of hybridization. So if you have 100% sp2 hybridization, in that case, what you're going to get is this kind of uh, material. Hmm. Okay, so you already know about graphite in general, about the properties and so on, but Graphite is very, very important for us in this uh, this entire course because most of the engineering carbon materials that we are going to talk about, if they are not graphite, they are trying to become like graphite. Huh? This is mostly our goal when we often perform any manufacturing process for carbon materials. We want them to become more and more, uh, you know, graphite-like or they, we want the uh, carbon atoms in, the, in that material to attain more and more sp2 type hybridization why do we do that because this is the material which has a higher electrical conductivity the perfect sp2 sp2 type material graphite that is going to be our sort of the gold standard huh and we are always trying to reach there in most with that that's the case with most of the disordered carbon materials i am saying graphite and not graphene here graphene as you know that it's a single layer of graphite hmm. okay but graphite the one that has ABABA type 3D crystal arrangement, we are going to discuss in detail in this particular course. This is more stable hmm, because of the fact that you also have not just 2D but 3D crystal arrangement. So a perfect graphite crystal is actually the most stable arrangement for carbon atoms. Hmm, okay, so anyway, we know that um, what you have is 1s and 2p um, orbitals that come together to for form the sp2 type molecular orbitals. Okay, now if you have these three sp2 uh, orbitals hmm, and I place three electrons in these uh, sp3, uh, sp2 orbitals, these three electrons again will try to go as far they will try to move apart from each other as much as possible hmm. so what is the most stable geometry for any three um, atoms they want to move as far from each other as possible well in that case this is a trigonal planar geometry that means you have a you basically have a triangle hmm, but planar triangle hmm. all of the sides of the triangle are equal basically this is just triangle you can make when you connect these three atoms sitting there but actually these are just 
lobes of your sp2 hybridized orbitals so you have an angle of 120 degrees between these three and of course the three bonding electrons will go and sit in each one of them so they bond with other similar sp2 hybridized carbon um, you know uh, carbon uh, molecules let's say or carbon entities okay but what you also have is two unhybridized p orbitals hmm. so um so you have one unhybridized so two lobes one unhybridized p orbital hmm. so let's call it pz hmm. and you have the two lobes hmm. this is where your one electron the the remaining one electron hmm, could be in any one of these two lobes hmm. okay so this unhybridized uh, p orbital and this electron is practically responsible for all the interesting properties of uh, of graphite and graphite like materials so that you already know okay so because of this unhybridized p orbital you may also often call um, you can also make a pyramid like I have shown in this picture and in that case what you you would also hear this term trigonal bipyramidal geometry of graphite structure um, so yeah this is these are trigonal and then two pyramids top and bottom so this is basically the uh, primary structural unit of any uh, graphite like uh, carbon okay so um, yes now what happens to the fourth electron hmm. so fourth electron you it, it will go into this uh, unhybridized orbital hmm. but will it Will it have 100% probability of, of staying there? Well, if you have this, uh, this entire atom, uh, this entire molecule in space, in that case, yes, the unhybridized uh, electron will also sit there. In the, uh, uh, the uh, electron will sit in the unhybridized orbital. But as soon as there is a possibility for this electron to move, it will start moving. And that is why we call it the free electron. This is the electron that is responsible for the electrical conductivity of, uh, of graphite. And also maybe some other, many other interesting properties actually. Hmm. Okay. So let's see when we have, this is the triangle. Now I have shown, you know, so the top view. Hmm. Okay. Again, all three uh, sides are equal. Hmm. Here it's not visible like that. Okay. So you have this one triangle with three, uh, three sp3, uh, sp2 hybridized lobes and then you have another one hmm. they come close to each other then what happens at a certain distance now the corner atoms will also form bonds with each other and you will what you will get is a hexagon so when i say carbon atoms these two atoms hmm. so they also now because they were available for bonding hmm. actually this hybridization only takes place when there is a vicinity when these kind of uh, you know a lot of carbon electrons are close to each other Hmm, when there is a possibility of bonding so these two electrons then also form a bond and the bond length um, you know of these sides of the hexagon will be equal so basically all sides of the hexagon will be equal and this is the very very stable geometry in fact the bond length in this case is even smaller than that of diamond hmm. so this is a very highly stable geometry for carbon okay now if i take two such hexagons hmm, so that is what i have shown here so the hexagons will also then connect with each other they will share the edges hmm, okay so two such hexagons if you see then all of them have these uh, you know additional the the unhybridized orbitals hmm, remaining there and each one of them also contain contains that uh, extra the, the fourth electron in all of them hmm. so what actually happens this fourth electrons now becomes delocalized delocalized means it does not really sit on one carbon atom we don't know what is the probability of finding this fourth electron in that unhybridized p orbital because now six of them if i talk about one ring six of six such atoms they they form this sort of a cloud of electrons so electron can be found in in that cloud but we cannot say that it will definitely be on this one single uh, carbon atom okay so this is what is known as delocalization now you uh, will hear that this is also um, the case with a lot of uh, chemical compounds not just elemental carbon but also in the case of a lot of aromatic compounds you will often hear this delocalized uh, electron cloud of uh, you know the, these uh, carbon rings mm. so this also is a very interesting um, phenomenon and which is responsible for a lot of chemical properties of carbons okay so this electron basically is then we say that it resonates hmm. so it basically uh, basically it is um, we don't know what is the probability of finding it we just know one thing however that the probability of finding this electron in any of the hybrid orbitals is zero 
hmm, because it does not go there. It is always this free electron. Hmm. So we don't find find it in the hybridized uh, orbitals. Okay, fine. Um, so yeah, if you now have many such hexagons, so I've shown two of them connected here. Hmm. But if you had many more uh, such hexagons, then you will form one sheet like structure and these sheet and chain like structures we are also going to learn about chain like structures in a while this is what makes carbon very interesting so you will often hear the term self polymerization also although we can call <coughs> we can call these structures polymers but remembering that there is no monomer unit as such it's the carbon atom or you can consider one hexagon as a monomer in that case yes you have multiple hexagons actually thousands of them, millions of them connected together to form these extensively large sheets of carbon. Hmm. Okay, so this, the sheet like molecules, of course, they are formed, um, you know, when it comes to sp2 type hybridization, not in sp3, hmm, because there the crystal will, will grow in all three dimensions here in two dimensions. Okay, um, so if I take, let's say, one hexagon, and I place another one on top of it, such that this the corner atom of the second hexagon is at the center of the first hexagon. Hmm. So the hexagon in the first layer. In that case, we call it graphite. In that case, this crystal arrangement is known as A, B, A type crystal arrangement because this is, you know, so one sheet is A, the second one is B, and the third one, A, will again be at the same position where your, you know, the first layer was. Hmm. So this kind of crystal structure is known as a, B, A, B, A type crystal arrangement and that is what we have in the case of graphite. However, if you do not have a second layer, if you just take one single layer of such, um, you know, these hexagons, in that case you call it graphene. Okay. Now let us talk about the third type of hybridization, SP hybridization. Hmm. Is it also possible to find some carbon materials, hmm, when I say materials in bulk, which have this sp hybridization so what do we know about this type of hybridization we have one s and one p orbital coming together forming the molecular orbitals and what we have is linear geometry so the angle between two um, uh, orbitals will be uh, 180 degrees okay so two between two lobes so this we know that we will have linear type of uh, of geometry of whatever is formed now can we have this um, in elemental carbon so for carbon compounds hydrocarbons it is known that you have in fact a lot of carbon um, uh, a lot of hydrocarbons are based on sp type hybridization in carbon atoms but can you also have elemental carbon which has this kind of hybridization so this is actually an interesting question and given the fact that we are still we still don't know a lot about carbon materials despite the fact that we already have a lot of carbon materials in fact there are so many of them that it's uh, difficult to fit all of them in one course hmm. and yet we still don't know a lot about carbon materials even sp hybridized carbon materials we have little information about that although there is a, a, a type of um, carbon structure elemental carbon structure that possesses this sp type of hybridization Okay, this is what we are going to talk about. Although, again, this is more common in compounds in hydrocarbons compared to in elemental carbon. But what you can have is these linear chain-like structures which have alternating single double or triple single bonds. So this will become more clear from this um, from this uh, illustration. So you can see these are the two possible structures of this type of linear chain like carbon molecule which is called carbine hmm. okay now the existence of carbine till date is debated however there have been also a lot of experimental uh, studies that have suggested that the that carbine exists and also uh, people um, at least that it has been reported that people have been able to produce carbines in large scale but then there are some other studies also which suggest that carbine uh, may exist but it's highly unstable hmm. so there is this is one of those carbon materials which we are still trying to understand hmm. okay however this is the proposed uh, structure of carbon so either uh, you know you have this kind of so the, maybe the bonds are always always resonating always there is you know they are uh, changing their positions hmm. and these kind of what you will call carbon strings hmm, carbon sutra 
that is basically uh, what is carbine hmm. okay so carbines um i said that there have been uh, several experimental uh, validations so often when people are synthesizing carbines they are uh, they are then getting them back from the hydrocarbons so they perform the dehydrogenation of hydrocarbons such as acetylene hmm. and uh, what is known as polycondensation okay so dehydrogenation means removing the hydrogen that is actually what we do for a lot of carbon materials it's not just about carbines even when we um, you know you will see in this uh, rest of this course that when when we also make any type of uh, disordered carbon material we often uh, you know heat treat the polymers to get these kind of materials also in the case of graphite so similarly we can also uh, perform the specialized dehydrogenation of uh, certain hydrocarbons and then we can obtain what is uh, what looks like this hmm, carbine okay now often what happens although these are linear so these are the one dimensional truly one dimensional carbon structures actually this is also interesting what do we call one dimensional when we have when we can sort of neglect let's say if i have a fiber so if i can neglect its diameter compared to its length in that case i can call it one dimension one dimensional however um maybe the, the if if we start talking about nanoscale if we actually look at that fiber maybe its diameter diameter is not negligible maybe it's 100 nanometer we can very well measure it and we can even reduce it further so in that case however since compared to the length the diameter is very very small we can consider the structure one dimensional but carbines hmm, if whether or not they uh, actually exist or whether or not they uh, can form industrial carbon materials whether or not they can be uh, whether or not they are stable or not these are different questions but if you think about this geometry this is a truly one dimensional geometry similar to graphene which is a 2d uh, you know truly 2d structure if it is one one atom thick only in the case when it is one atom thick you thick so when you have a single layer of graphene similarly a single strand of carbine would be a truly one dimensional structure because that would also be one atom thick hmm. okay so these carbon strings are very important however you can imagine that for such one dimensional uh, strings to exist on their own is is difficult they are very high energy structure so often what they do again there are various proposed models on uh, the uh, you know crystal structure or the arrangement of carbines how do they come together they um, i will not call it agglomeration but arrangement of some sort hmm, okay so here in this um, this image for example i have shown one suggested um, arrangement where you say see that these linear um, strings hmm, they come together in such a way that they end up forming a hexagon like structure so i have only shown the half of the hexagon hmm, okay so you actually do not have just um, you know just one hexagon like structure if you see from the top but you also have some more strings not just uh, uh, not just a hexagon some more strings are are placed inside this hexagon the point is that often this arrangement has this 5.15 angstrom um, uh, distance between two two chain like uh, uh, structures hmm. so this has been um, found in some of the experiments but there are also many other models of the crystal structure or the arrangement of these carbine um, chains again i would say that um, there is a lot of work being done so it is debated whether or not they exist however um, one thing is clear that we don't know too much about the properties hmm. so although carbines number one you can prepare them by dehydrogenation of uh, uh, hydrocarbons also in the vapor phase carbon so what is vapor phase carbon if um, i really uh, provide a lot of energy hmm, to carbon solid carbon graphite then it would convert into uh, into a vapor phase but that takes place only at very high temperatures and pressures hmm. or if you are if you're trying to do it at room temperature then it's going to be uh, approximately you know above 3500 degrees centigrade temperatures hmm. and then in that case graphite without converting into liquid phase hmm, it com completely sublimates hmm. so it converts into vapor phase carbon hmm, at uh, standard pressure so this is something we are going to discuss when we talk about the phase diagram of carbon okay the point is that when you have these carbon vapors in those carbon vapors um, carbine has been observed hmm. also when meteorites hit the earth 
Hmm. Those are very interesting events, right? The meteorites carry some carbon. They are carbonaceous uh, chondrites or, or something. And then they, they, this is a very, very high impact uh, uh, the, the, the process. Hmm. So you end up getting very interesting forms of carbon. Huh. So various car carbons and also what has been found, um, there is something called a white carbon. Hmm. So silver white color uh, carbon material and that material is also said to uh, contain carbides. Hmm. So, okay. The point is that we don't know too much about the properties of these uh, materials yet. Mm -hmm. So it is believed or at least initial studies suggested that carbines are semiconducting, but there have also been studies that suggest that they are, uh, they are metallic. So they are uh, electrical conductors. So these things are still going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you need to think about it for yourself. Um, in our disordered carbon materials, we have amor amorphous regions and we have crystalline regions. Huh? So amorphous regions, can they contain some linear because amorphous regions basically are the regions where there is no well-defined hybridization that is the de definition right you have various bond lengths which basically means no proper no well-defined hybridization you can have carbon atoms in other hybridization states huh? the states between sp2 and sp3 or the states between sp2 and sp1 is it possible huh? or can we also have ground state um, atoms or can we have sp hybridized atoms um, in these amorphous regions and if yes, can we also find carbine like geometries in these regions? The answer, I think it is yes, but you can also think of it from uh, for yourself, uh, you know, uh, whether or not it is possible. And if it is possible, one thing is for sure, it's going to be very difficult to characterize it, to find out that these are, um, you know, carbines in my amorphous region. Hmm. Okay, so um, yeah, we can potentially find carbines uh, in various forms of carbon. Hmm. Okay. Um, and it is very clear that if, uh, if we know more about these carbines, that uh, the carbon strings, hmm, okay, um, then that will definitely help us a lot in understanding various carbon materials, the discovery of more carbon materials also uh, for development of new industry and carbon materials. Hmm, okay. So here are some references that I have provided. These are specific to carbines, not diamond and graphite. Hmm. So you can, uh, these are the books, uh, the compilations where you can find, um, so the first one is a book and the second one is a book chapter. You can find more details about all proposed models of uh, the crystal structure of carbine. Hmm. And you can also find out more details about the, um, you know, proposed uh, mechanisms of formation of carbine and also other um, chemical pathways that can lead to carbine formation.